Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the Circa Millions Week 7 results, and also going to be going through the selection process for Week 8. And again, for those of you that are watching this for the first time, expected to see my against the spread uh, uh, predictions uh, come to the wrong place. All we're trying to do is do what's necessary to win this contest. And if it's we're not going to win, which is probably going to be the case, at least learn how to be contrarian because that's what you have to do with this contest. We're not trying to beat the bookmaker. We're trying to beat thousands of other people in this contest uh, against the spread. And, and again, against the spread, uh, the spreads in the NFL are very, very, uh, are very tight. They're very sharp. So you can't really expect to do better than 50%. So if that's the case, the, what you can do is try to find the teams that less people are going to be playing so you get leverage and you can get maybe three to one odds on a game where you normally get a uh, pickup, right? So that's what we're trying to accomplish is to get in the heads of the selectors and try to be contrarian. We've done a really, really good job of that this year with respect to putting ourselves in the position to win. Unfortunately, the results haven't come through, but that's not something that we can deal with, okay? Um, so let's review what um, uh, let, let's review what we did last week and the mistakes we made and whatever, and and then we'll go on to this week. So we played the uh, well. First of all, we made a big mistake. We forgot to play the Thursday game. Uh, we got in a little bit late, and as I mentioned, you just have to bet the Thursday game every week. It's the, it's the least owned game all the time and probably for good reason um you know because if you play that thursday game you deprive yourself of the possibility of getting good line value later but the 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 the, uh, the, the amount of people playing the thursday game is so small you just have to almost blindly play one of these um and unfortunately i forgot to do that um fortunately i probably would have taken the uh the, the loser in that game i think i probably would have had the saints i'm not sure but in either case that was a big mistake um what did we do we were kind of limited because we don't want to play teams that have these three point spreads because we don't want to be on the pick them side. So we, there weren't that many teams that we could pick. Um, we did take the Falcons, which was really, really good. Uh, they're one of the lower owned teams on the board. We took them. Uh, they ended up winning. Well, forget they ended up winning. They ended up being one of the lower teams on the board. We also took the Cardinals and the Cardinals were the, I think, the lowest team on the board with uh, the exception of the Jaguar Saints game. So that was extremely strong. We took the Chargers, and I had a feeling this was going to happen. They ended up a little bit too popular. Well, much too popular. So that was a lemon. We, again, we were sort of limited by who we could take this week. We did take Miami, and at least they were lower owned than the Eagles. And we took the Packers. So we were a little bit uh, hamstrung last week because of these pick these three point spreads, but we were on you know, several of the lower owned teams and that's really all you can ask for. So let's take a look at this week's board and let's see again, if we can find the teams that people are going to be playing and go against them. Now, again, what are we looking for? Well, people, again, they, they, most people like to play favorites okay? they also like to play teams at home. They like to play teams that are not giving more than those key numbers, like, you know, uh, three and seven. You, you want, the, the people love to only lay two and a half. They love to only lay six and a half. They don't like to, uh, they, they're going to take an underdog. They're going to take uh, like a three and a half or a seven and a half. And then other, the other thing is that, again, they, they, they just like playing what they consider good teams, you know, teams with good quarterbacks, good coaches, whatever that means. But the narrative of forgetting what the spread is, they'll be more inclined to play a team with people they've heard of and just the people they feel more comfortable with than otherwise. And the other thing, again, I've noticed is that the, the bad teams are completely ignored. OK, like like teams like the Cardinals, literally every week, they're the lowest owned team. Now, again, think about this for a second. We're not talking about whether they're going to win the game. All we're talking about is whether they're going to cover a spread that, you know, that theoretically they're 50 percent to cover. And if they're never going to get picked, you just have to keep playing them every single week. Um, so let's take a look and see what our candidate plays are. And then we'll 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 play them live here. So, uh, OK, so Bucks nine and a half against the Bills. Okay, a couple of things going for us here. Number one, they're a road team. 
people like to play the home team. Number two, it's on the right side of that, that 10 points. You know, if you're playing the Bills, you're like, okay, I'm only laying nine and a half. I don't have to lay a 10. And the Bills are still, you know, the most recent results notwithstanding, considered kind of a, that good team, you know. So I think the Bucks are really, really good at plus nine and a half. Uh, Colts won over Saints. I don't think anybody's going to go near that one. And the other thing, by the way, is that this is the Thursday game, you know. So, I mean, I, I would take the Bills before I would pass this game. But it's low owned and the Bucks are a good point spread team. Uh, good point spread bet here. So uh, we'll, we'll try this. Uh, Saints, Colts, no real lean one way or the other there. Okay, so here's an interesting one. So Steelers are minus two and a half. So this is a couple of things going here. First of all, people like to play teams at home, Pittsburgh. People like to take uh, two and a half. Oh, it's two and a half point underdogs. Uh, never mind. What I was going to say is that also the Steelers are one of those just really popular teams in general. You could Everybody always plays Pittsburgh, so we have to stay away from them. If anything here, I would probably take the Jaguars um, because Steelers are home. They are their home, and they're just a popular team in general. It's They're on the wrong side of that point spread, though. You don't like to play – well, people like to play the two and the three-and-a-half point underdog, so I don't know if they're going to be all over Pittsburgh. So we'll hold on to that one. Uh, ten, uh, Houston Panthers, no, it's a push spread for openers. All right, Eagles Commanders. Um, all right, so this has two of three things going for it. Number one, people love playing the Eagles. Good team. They hate playing the Commanders. Bad team. They, it's a six and a half point spread, which is great. Okay, if I take the Eagles, all I have to lay is six and a half. The only thing is the Commanders are at home, um, but Two out of three or three out of four ain't bad. So we'll pick the commanders for now. Cowboys, six and a half against the Rams. Right, This isn't bad either. Um, Cowboys, America's team, and people have playing the Cowboys. Uh, Rams are not exactly unowned either, though. But, you know, you get that Rams six and a half point dog, you know, that, 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 that six and a half point, you know, key number play. They're actually not bad. Uh, my aunt, oh, this one. This one, this one's going to test me because almost everything about this is a perfect play. So you have Dolphins only nine and a half against New England, only because it's not 10. The Dolphins are a wrecking machine, okay? And the Patriots are, quote, unquote, you know, they, they look bad. The problem is, is that everybody always plays the Patriots. Um, and they're coming off that win over Buffalo. So, uh uh, I don't think I can get contrarian enough to, by playing New England here. We'll put it here for now, but we'll get back to it. Giants, Jets, three is a push game. Falcons, three is a push game. Vikings, Packers. I mean, nothing really. You know, I look at this game and, I'm, and nothing really stands out. I mean, who are people going to pick? I don't know. Probably, probably both of them. Okay, Seattle, three and a half at home against Cleveland. Um, Nothing really, you know, because, again, the home three-and-a-half point favorites, uh, I think people are going to be on both sides of this game. I think people would be afraid to lay three-and-a-half to a good defensive team like Cleveland. But on the other hand, Cleveland on the road with P.J. Walker, that doesn't make too much sense. If anything, I would take Cleveland. You know, that seems to be the most uncomfortable place to go. All right, Chiefs, seven-and-a-half at Broncos. This has two things going for it and two going against it. The two things that are going for it is, number one, the Broncos are, quote, a bad team. Number two, the Chiefs are an amazing team, and they have Mahomes and all that stuff. The problem is the Broncos are a big old seven-and-a-half-point underdog coming off a win. So I don't think they're going to get ignored here, so I'm probably going to have to stay away. Um, Niners, three-and-a-half Bengals. I think this is just considered a good game that no one's really going to be pounding one way or the other. Okay, Ravens, Cardinals, let's just – we got to just keep playing the Cardinals every week. You know, yeah, they're at home, but everybody – just nobody ever plays this team. And they stream teams against them. This is not Survivor. You know, this is this is against the spread. I don't understand it. So, whatever, we'll just keep on playing them. Cardinals plus nine and a half. Uh, Chargers, eight and a half over the Bears. Oh, well, this one's a good one, too, because you have the Bears at the backup quarterback. Chargers are only eight and a half. 
the Bears are still looking as as a bad team. And the Chargers are always kind of overrated a little bit. So I think the Bears are really solid. And then you have Lions 9 against the Raiders. Boy, there are a couple of really good options here. I think the Raiders plus the 9 makes sense. I mean, who's taking the Raiders? They're terrible. You know? Uh, the only thing is the Lions are coming off that, that beating. So maybe people will be a little afraid to lay the 9 against, you know, the Raiders who – I guess historically are decent on Monday night. So I'll probably stay off of that one. So we've got a lot of options here. So we've, we've identified one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams. So we could be a little greedier. Um, well, the Buccaneers are for sure. The Cardinals are for sure. And it's just a question of which of these have the least fleas. I guess the Rams have to be the next one because they are on the road uh, and it's that six and a half point thing. So we're going to go Bucks, Rams, um, Bears. Ooh. So it's between the Patriots, Browns and Commanders and Cardinals. Oh, Cardinals for sure. Sorry. So Cardinals, Bears, Rams, Bucks, and one other. So it's either going to be the Browns plus 3X, Patriots plus 9X, or the Commanders plus 6X. We're going to take the Commanders. Um, no real reason. I mean, I just think they're going to probably be a little lower owned than these others. Maybe we should take the freaking Patriots. Every time I do this, though, No, we are going to take the Patriots. Boy, this is so close. I'll tell you, man, I don't know about this. the Rams. Aren't people going to take the Rams? Yeah, we got to go for more bad teams here. All right, this is what we'll do. We're going to go P.J. Walker. Yeah, we'll do P.J. Walker. That's what we'll do. So we'll do terrible team and P.J. Walker instead of, you know, McVay and, 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 and Belichick. They're probably going to take a little bit of money. And that'll do it. So again, all we're judging this is let's let's see how contrarian these five picks end up. End up, uh, and God forbid they win, that'd be even nicer. But uh, we'll see what happens. That'll do it. Uh, let's save this, and that's it. Good luck, everybody.